for example, when the New York Times piece came out on you about three weeks ago, the enforced monogamy yeah. piece. Now, the, the author of it, I, I'm not even going to mention her name, but if you want it, you can go ahead. Um, she sat in the green room with us. I think on the first night in Toronto, she mm -hmm. was all smiles, oh, friendly. Yeah. You even said to me how much you like her, and you mm -hmm. introduced me to her, and yeah. we were, you know, we were chatting. Um, she seemed perfectly pleasant and lovely. And then, of course, this piece comes out. It implies that you're for forced monogamy, which is which. Why don't you just explain that real quick? Just do a, do a one minute well, the recap implication on, was, on what you were the, talking about. The implication about. was, and 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 to the degree that this has been let's say, exaggerated in the aftermath of the piece. The implication was that I was promoting the idea that, you know, perfectly innocent women would be lined up by the state and distributed en masse to undeserving males so yeah. that they wouldn't be violent. We've only know. done that at one show, right? Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. It's, and it, it didn't go that well. It did not go so, well. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and, and th that was quite curious because that part of the conversation I had with the journalist lasted probably two minutes out of what was essentially a two-day interview. And... It was obviously something that triggered her imagination um, in, in the sense that she saw that she could use it for, for, I don't know, for political purposes or something like that in the piece. But it was so palpably absurd because the, and I would say amateurish in some sense as well, because the position that she accused me of holding, A, uh, I didn't hold, so that, that's the first problem. B, no one holds. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're going to try to pillory someone, in a manner that's at least vaguely believable, you should accuse them of holding a view that at least some person has <laughs> held at some point. Right. And no one has ever held that view. And then the other thing that was quite um, off-putting, let's say, is that she's not stupid. She knew perfectly well what I meant by enforced monogamy, by the term. It's an anthropological term. It's been used for a uh, hundred years. And the idea that Polygamous societies, which would be the contrast, say, to monogamous societies, the idea that they're more violent is no one disputes that. Yeah. It's, it's like a, it's a anthropological, sociological, and psychological truism. And it's also one that's been, it's not like the left has been promoting polygamy. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so it, was, it was, well, the, 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 the article... Uh, surprised me, to say the least. Well, yeah, but, but you made a, an interesting move after that, which ties this all together, because you did a little checking on the phrase in in the archives of the New York Times. Well, the, the whole point t to me was, uh, if I could take Jordan out of the equation and I could make it into the New York Times wrestling with itself, uh, I was pretty sure that the New York Times would have some record of having used the phrase enforced monogamy at some point. And so I went to the search engine and I put in quote, enforced monogamy, close quote. And sure enough, there were two relatively recent references within the last 20, 25 years, both of them positive. One, uh, I believe, coming out of evolutionary theory in Dr Drosophila, where it's a less common term in evolutionary theory, but it has leaked into the evolutionary literature. And the other one uh, coming from Af Afghanistan, where um, you have polygamous marriage, and that leaves too many violent young men with nothing to do, and mm -hmm. that can be useful if you're conquesting other lands, saying, well, you have no wife here, but there's, a, there's territory over there. And this is exactly, you know, the New York Times was celebrating the idea that in a culture that was at that, that stage in its evolution, uh, enforced monogamy was something that uh, went hand in hand with women's rights because, of course, right. having which uh, is the classic fewer, argument, having fewer violent men is good. with no romantic prospects is in mm -hmm. general good for the safety of women. Mm -hmm. And so the whole thing, which is, is actually my point, well, I know, yeah. I know. But the, but the point was, can I take Jordan out of it and say the New York Times is wrestling with itself and mm -hmm. not fairly? And this mm -hmm. is the great danger: is that that finger is on the scale. Now the other thing is, is that. That particular journalist first met, uh, was talking with Brett um, well before talking with you, and then Brett sent this journalist to me. And by the way, I don't think that we should not talk about the name of the journalist, since the journalist is certainly using your name. And the idea, sure. so it's, it's Nellie Bowles, and right, right. Uh, I found her engaging, uh, charming, mm -hmm. uh, very quick, intelligent. Mm -hmm. The thing that I didn't appreciate, and I got fairly far into my discussion with her, and I was off the record, is, you know, she began with the gambit, well, of course, I'm going to be running your tweet on James Damore, which, um, you know, went viral and uh, was widely misinterpreted, and again, in a deliberate fashion, which uh, my tweet was responding to somebody saying, you know, if human re resources, that somebody else from Google tweeted, if human resources won't do something about this, then, you know, they're going to have trouble on their hands. 
And I was like, okay, you're telling people to run to human resources because James Damore uh, is looking at big five uh, psychometrics for personality and asking the question, how do we increase the uh, accessibility uh, of Google to female coders? And whether you agree with this technique or not, uh, I think that that was clearly his point. So the, the idea is I'm going to bring up this tweet that has been widely uh, mischaracterized of yours, Eric. And you know what became clear was she had the idea that she wanted to find the men's rights activist community. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, she said something about, well, you're MRA. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't even know what that meant. So I mm -hmm. said, NRA? Like, <laughs> I thought it was National Rifle right, Association. Right, right, right. And she's like, you know, men's rights activist. I said, what? And so we had this. Well, that was just you being disingenuous, because of course you know what men's rights activists are. Right, well, yeah, I, I you are one. OK, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the point would be, you know, it's like, you, you believe in human rights, yes. Well, you know, men are human, so you believe in men's rights. And you believe that one should be active. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, at some level, it's a reserved term for people who are very often kind of veering a spectrum of people who are talking about bad aspects of family you know, law versus people who are downright misogynist. Right, 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 right. And I was just aghast, which is like, why are you trying to shoehorn me into this pre-existing mm. thing. Well, which, that's the question. It's, well, this it's is, the motivation for the for the shoehorning. And well, this is so. Well, this is the big issue coming. You know, it's hard well, to track already, all the threads. Let me let me yeah, just get back yeah. to it. what we don't understand is is that they've invested in all of this cognitive Lego, right? So they've you know, the equity or toxic yes. masculinity yes. or white so, privilege, whatever these things are, mm -hmm. and so everything in high dimensional space gets shoved into mm -hmm. this completely inappropriate kind of cognitive Lego. Yes, absolutely. Which the, furthermore, the format of these things, like I recently got asked to, to do a bit on a, on a show on television on an established network. And they said, you know, we're really blowing it out. We've, we've, t we've got the message that this new form of uh, long form interview uh, is the is wave of the future. It's like, well, how much am I going to get? Oh. We might go from five to eight minutes. Right. Right. <laughs> so right, right. the idea is like, you I can't say well, hello in five well, minutes. Well, but this is the point, right? It's like, I have access to three hours when I want it. Right. They're like, well, that's insane. Right. It's like, they can't move that much. No. And so for no, well, a long that's partly why the format's dying. Because, and, and it's also, I think, one of the reasons that we think we're stupider than we are. I like this part our, a lot. Our, our, including our audience, is that, you know, because TV, one of the things I have noticed about television in general is that it's predicated on the presumption that the audience is stupid. But if you have to force everything through a channel whose maximum dimension is six minutes, right. then everyone's going to look well, stupid. Well, this is the thing. This is, if you think about what happened where television went from being the dumb medium to the incredibly smart medium when you went from TV dramas of a half an hour or yeah. maybe an hour in length to many, many shows over a season exactly. developing characters at a level that a film can't touch. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and that it's, literature approaches. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. So the idea is that in The Sopranos or Mad Men or Game of Thrones, people are following incredibly difficult and rich plots. And you, you have to go back to this old adage, which nobody ever lost a dime uh, underestimating the intelligence of the American people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's only true if you don't understand opportunity costs, because people have been not losing dimes, but millions by not understanding that anyone who can follow Game of Thrones, right? How is it that this thing that we're about to do, I have no idea why, you know, we're just having a conversation. There's gonna be over 100,000 views of this thing, I think, very quickly. Yeah. I, I got one video on my channel of any substance, uh, one video, it's got nearly 60,000 views. People are hungry for this thing that they're being starved yep, for. Yes, and definitely. what they don't understand in the regular media mm -hmm. is, is that their format is killing them. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, well, and this is something we really, we really have to pay attention to because a tremendous amount of what's going on is the consequence. You know, you said that a, a complex reality is being shoveled into a, 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 a tiny dimensional space. And so there's some ideological reasons for that. But I think some of that is being fed by the channels of the media because it's a lot easier to take a complex situation like that and shovel it into a pre-existing a priori interpretive space because everyone already understands it. Mm -hmm. So if you've only got a few minutes, then there's a bunch of things that you don't have to explain because you're just telling the well, same old story. Well, it's worse than that because what, what, what we also don't grasp is that 
we don't file flight plans. Like you're mm -hmm. having me on the show, you don't know what, what I'm gonna say. You mm -hmm. don't know what my positions mm -hmm. are on immigration. You don't know what my positions are on abortion. We've never gotten to that, I don't think. And I was actually thinking that about both of you. I don't think we've ever discussed it. We, we can mm -hmm. get into we, it. We but can, yeah. but yeah. What, the, the way the, the, this commentariat works, and I've been waking up to the idea that this layer even exists because I didn't think about it too much, is that mostly these people have consistent takes. That is, they mm -hmm. are counted upon to take mm -hmm. complicated reality and you know, give us the Tom Friedman point. Mm -hmm. give, us the, give us the Paul Krugman point. You know, give us the Ezra Klein view. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, well, why is there a sort of regular, consistent view on these things? Like, 